From the River Thames to London Wall. From Temple Bar to Olgert Pump. A city, but one square mile. A city as young as each new morning, yet endowed with a wisdom that only comes with age. Beneath the monument, the barrows rattle in Billingsgate. Early markets, the first signs of life in a waking city. So they come, the people of London, of the city yet dwelling beyond its walls. For on people does the city's life depend. Each one something in the city, all the city's wealth and strength. Within the square mile, a maze of banks and business houses, structures of steel and stone, yet built because of money, wheat and wool, oil and ships. For these facades conceal the men and the work of one of the greatest financial centers of the world. For this city is a mart, a bartering place, a rendezvous where thousands trade in the things they seldom see where deals are made at a casual meeting by the nod of a head or a penciled note, where the nearness of office to market means money in the rush of business life. Here are the exchanges, centers of commerce operated by personal contact, vast yet as intimate as the old coffee houses from which they grew. Most famous, perhaps, the stock exchange. Here a thousand deals are made within the hour because the pace must keep in step with that of the whole world's business. The house, whose decisions and deals must then be flashed to every capital so that the world can keep in step with London. Around the corner, the Baltic, the home of floating cargoes. Here, men of shipping, by word of mouth alone, affect the movement of a thousand vessels, from liners to tramps, from tugs to aircraft, the things they carry and the ports to which they sail. Then, that which grew from a coffee house run by one Edward Lloyd, Lloyd's of London.
David Howden Gamble, Babington Vasey Newton. Here members quote insurance. Insurance for the ship, its cargo and its crew. Insurance against fire or theft or rain at the village fate. Such is the city of London. Only a marketplace, but one dealing in the trade of the world. The city has long outgrown the things with which the city started. Today, the pool that once held all the ships that came is only a part of the largest port in the world. In such a mighty stream of trade, so much must pass the city by. Yet more goods than ever before flow into the Thames side warehouses. Wine from Spain, Portugal and the Commonwealth to be assessed for bouquet and quality. Tea from China, India and Ceylon to be tasted and blended into a hundred grades. Furs by the shipload, beaver and mink, Persian lamb and Russian sable, skins from the world to be graded by experts, then to be auctioned in London and then sold back to the world. For spices, cloth, or what you will, this is the place of experts. From importer to broker, from broker to dealer, each knows the worth of the product, and each knows his customer's needs. For only thus are the best deals made. Lunchtime in the city, and a brief pause in the rush of trade, when the city becomes a place in which to take your ease, a place where past and present dwell together, united, indivisible. 